St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire, and the first Republican presidential debate in this first in the nation primary state. Behind me on this stage, the Republican candidates for president, appearing together on the same stage for the first time tonight. And tonight's debate will be different than any presidential debate you've ever seen. Over the course of the next two hours, in addition to questions from myself and journalists from our partners, WMUR and the New Hampshire Union leader, the candidates will take correct questions directly from voters right here in Manchester, as well as from voters at town meetings taking place tonight all across New Hampshire. So let's get right to it and meet the candidates. Now, we've asked for no opening statements. However, we will continue a tradition from our past New Hampshire debates to ask each candidate in one short sentence, hopefully five, maybe six or seven seconds, to introduce themselves to the voters of New Hampshire and the United States of America. Let me begin with an example. I'm John King with CNN. I am honored to be your moderator tonight, and I am thrilled to be back in Red Sox Nation. Now let's start at the end of the stage with Senator Rick Santorum. Hello, New Hampshire. I'm Rick Santorum. I served 12 years representing Pennsylvania in the United States Senate, but I also have substantial executive experience making the tough decisions of balancing budget and cutting spending. Karen and I are the parents of seven children. Hi, my name is Michelle Bachman. I'm a former federal tax litigation attorney. I'm a businesswoman. We started our own successful company. I'm also a member of the United States Congress. I'm a wife of 33 years. I've had five children, and we are the proud foster parents of 23 great children. And it's a thrill to be here tonight in the live free or die state. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House. And when 14 million Americans are out of work, we need a new president to end the Obama Depression. Governor? I'm Mitt Romney, and it's an honor to be back at St. Anselm. Hopefully, I'll get it right this year. And I uh, appreciate the chance to be with you and to welcome my wife. And uh, I have five sons, as you know, five daughters-in-law, 16 grandkids. The most important thing in my life is to make sure their future is bright and that America is always known as the hope of the earth. Thank you. I am Congressman Ron Paul. I've been elected to the Congress 12 times from Texas. Before I went into the Congress, I delivered babies for a living and delivered 4,000 babies. Now I would like to be known and defend the title that I am the champion of liberty and I defend the Constitution. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Tim Pawlenty. I'm a husband. My wife Mary and I have been married for 23 years. I'm the father of two beautiful daughters, Anna and Mara. I'm a neighbor, and I'm running for President of the United States because I love America. But like you, I'm concerned about its future. I've got the experience and the leadership and the results to lead it to a better place. Mr. Kane. Hello, I'm Herman Kane. I am not a politician. I am a problem solver with over 40 years of business and executive experience, father of two, grandfather of three, and I'm here tonight because it's not about us, it's about those grandkids. Happy to be here in New Hampshire. Right. Our thanks to the candidates. You'll get to know them better as the night goes on. Our rules are pretty straightforward. Each candidate will be given one minute to answer or lead off questions. At my discretion, I may ask other candidates to weigh in on each topic. Now, candidates would get about 30 seconds to answer those follow-up questions. I say about 30 seconds because we're on the honor system tonight. No bells, no whistles. You won't see any flashing lights up here. If they're running over time, I'll try to gently remind them it's time to move on. And we're hoping some of the answers will be as short, maybe a sentence, maybe even just one word. We can't hope, right? We've also asked the candidates to answer the questions that they're asked rather than the question they might have wished to be asked. <laughs> That's enough. Uh-huh. That's enough for me tonight. Let's get straight to the people of New Hampshire now. Our first question comes from a voter up in Plymouth. Also there is the New Hampshire Union leaders, Tom Fahey. Tom. Thank you, John. I'm here with Mr. Marquez Serling. He is a 
retired professor from Plymouth State University, and he's got a question about jobs. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Gingrich said there are 14 million people unemployed. My question is this. The Democrats say that the, that the Republicans don't have any plans to, to uh, uh, create jobs and jobs, and jobs in the private uh, sector, not in the government jobs. I'd like to know what are those plans. Mr. Kane, let me start with you tonight. And as be as specific as you can, I hope I don't have to repeat this throughout the night. How would you, what would you do as President of the United States to create jobs? The thing we need to do is to get this economy boosted. This economy is stalled. It's like a train on the tracks with no engine. And the administration has simply been putting all of this money in the caboose. We need an engine called the private sector. That means lower taxes, lower the capital gains tax rate to zero, suspend taxes on repatriated profits, then make them permanent. Uncertainty is killing this economy. This is the only way we're going to get this economy moving, and that's to put the right fuel in the engine, which is the private sector. All right, let me come down to this then. Senator Santorum, you mentioned you said you have executive experience as well as your Senate experience. Governor Pawlenty laid out an economic plan, a lot of tax cuts in that plan. Some economists said he had some unrealistic expectations, that he said you could grow the economy 5% a year, then 5% a year, then 5% a year. Do you believe that is possible, or is that too optimistic to be to the American people who want help but don't want to be misled? Yeah, I think we need a president who's optimistic who has a pro-growth agenda. I'm not going to comment on 5% or 4%. What we need is, a, is a, uh, an economy that's unshackled. And what's happened in this administration is that they have passed oppressive policy and oppressive regulation after Obamacare being first and foremost. The oppressiveness of that bill on, on businesses, anybody that wants to invest to get any kind of return, when you see the regulations that are going to be put on business, when you see the taxation, throw on top of that what this president has done on energy. The reason we're seeing this second dip is because of energy prices, and this president has put a stop sign again against oil drilling, against any kind of exploration offshore or in Alaska, and that is depressing. We need to drill, we need to create energy jobs, just like we're doing, by the way, in Pennsylvania, where we're drilling right. 3,000 okay. wells this year right. for gas, and gas prices are down, natural gas prices are down as a result. I'll try to ask all of you to keep the follow-ups to 30 seconds as we can, so we can get more in. Governor Plenty, answer the critics, and as you do so, who say 5% every year is just unrealistic, and as you do so, where's the proof? Where's the proof that just cutting taxes will create jobs? If that were true, why, during the Bush years, after the big tax cut, where were the jobs? Well, John, my plan involves a whole plan, not just cutting taxes. We're proposing to cut taxes, reduce regulation, uh, speed up the uh, pace of government, and to make sure that we have a pro-growth uh, agenda. This president is a declinist. He views America as one of equals around the world. We're not the same as Portugal. We're not the same as Argentina. And this idea that we can't have 5% growth in America is hogwash. It's a defeatist attitude. If China can have 5% growth and Brazil can have 5% growth, then the United States of America can have 5% growth. And I don't accept this notion that we're going to be average or anemic. So my proposal has a 5% growth target. It cuts taxes, but it also dramatically cuts spending. We need to fix regulation. We need to have a pro-American energy policy. We need to fix health care policy. And if you do those things, if I, as I've proposed, right. including cut spending, you'll get this economy moving, okay, growing the to, private economy right. by shrinking I, government. I don't want to do much of this, but I'm going to have to interrupt if people go a little bit long so we get more done. Governor Romney, I want you to come in on that point. Is 5% overly optimistic? And is it fair to compare the United States economy, a fully developed economy, to the Chinese economy, which is still in many ways developing? Look, Tim has the right instincts, which is he recognizes that what this president has done has slowed the economy. He, he didn't create the recession, but he made it worse and longer. And now we have more chronic long-term employment than this country has ever seen before. 20 million people out of work, stopped looking for work or in part-time jobs that need full-time jobs. We've got housing prices continuing to decline, and we have foreclosures at record levels. This president has failed. And, and he's failed at a time when the American people counted on him to create jobs and get the economy going. And instead of doing that, he delegated the, the stimulus to Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, and then he did what he wanted to do, card check, cap and trade, Obamacare, re-regulation. I, I spent my life in the private sector, 25 right. years. Okay. Right. And as I went around the right. world, th okay. this is an important topic. I Let's, went around the world. We'll have a lot of time on the topic. You, you, we just, you can we won't tell get how, through this. how to get jobs right. going right. in this country, and right. President Obama's done it wrong. And the right. ideas Tim described, those, right. are, those are in the right wheelhouse. Mr. Speaker, if you look at a poll in the Boston Globe just the other day, 54% of Republican voters in this state say they're willing to have higher taxes on the wealthy to help bring down the deficit. Are they wrong? Well, no. 
But the question is, would it in fact increase jobs or kill jobs? Uh, the Reagan recovery, which I participated in passing, in seven years created for this current economy the equivalent of 25 million new jobs, raised federal revenue by $800 billion a year in terms of the current economy, uh, and clearly worked. It's a historic fact. The Obama administration is an anti-jobs, anti-business, anti-American energy, destructive force, and we shouldn't talk about what we do in 2013. The Congress this year, this next week, ought to repeal the Dodd-Frank bill, they ought to repeal the Sarbanes-Oxley bill, they ought to start creating jobs uh, right now because for those 14 million Americans, this is a depression now. So the speaker just said, Congresswoman, repeal Dodd-Frank. Answer the American out there who says, maybe I don't like all of the details, but after what happened in 2007 and 2008, I don't want Wall Street to not have somebody looking at them, watching what they're doing. Well, I, I'm looking forward to answering that question because I introduced the repeal bill to repeal Dodd-Frank because it's an over-the-top bill that will actually lead to more job loss rather than job creation. But before I fully answer that, I just want to make an announcement here for you, John, on CNN tonight. I filed today my paperwork to seek the office of the presidency of the United States today, and I'll huh? very soon be making my formal announcement. So I wanted you to be the I first to know. All right. Well, welcome. Now, if, if you're out there and you don't get the distinction, coming into the night, Congresswoman Bachman was exploring. She hadn't taken that last step. The other candidates had taken it. I'm sure they welcome you to the fray. Let, let's continue the conversation. I, I want to come to Congressman Paul. You're all here saying the President of the United States is making the economy worse. Has he done one thing? Has he done one thing right when it comes to the economy in this country? Boy, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I, I can't think of anything, but may I ask, answer the question that you alluded to before about whether or not 5% is too optimistic. No, there's, there's nothing wrong without, without setting a goal of 5 or 10 or 15% if you have a free market economy. We're trying to unwind a Keynesian bubble that's been going on for 70 years, and you're not going to touch this problem until you liquidate the bad debt and the malinvestment, go back to work, but you have to have sound money. You have to recognize how we got into trouble. We got into trouble because we had a financial bubble, and it's caused by the Federal Reserve. If you don't look at monetary policy, we will continue the trend of the last decade. We haven't we haven't developed any new jobs in the last decade. Matter of fact, we've had 30 million new people and no new jobs. It's because they don't, but people don't understand monetary policy and central economic planting. Free markets will give you 10 or 15 percent growth or whatever, and you will okay. not have to turn right. it off because you think it's going to cause inflation. It right, doesn't jump, work that I'm, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to ask one more time politely. We want to get as many voters as we can involved, so please try to shorten the follow-up answers just a bit if you can. Let's go back to Tom in Plymouth. He has another voter with a question. 